Welcome back guys to a new Cyberpunk video, it's time to make net running op again. After those recent nerfs from patch 202, this will be the new best and most powerful netrunner build you have ever seen. To make it even more op, we will combine net running with blades with two new netrunner glitches and a new slow mo glitch that will make you literally completely invincible with combining the two most powerful playstyles in the game, which is the melee playstyle and the netrunner playstyle together. And this combination is so powerful because whenever you encounter an enemy that has quick hack resistance such as the max hacks you can simply run towards them and melt them with your katana within seconds. Of course all the footage and all the demonstration in this video was done on very hard as usual and as you can also see I'm only using 3 quick hacks for my Q which is the more reasonable economic approach since we no longer get the original ram cost for the last quick hack it is more feasible to just upload 3 quick hacks to 4 enemies instead of 4 quick hacks to 3 enemies that will allow us to cover 25% more more enemies without wasting any ram or damage. I've also found a very cool way to actually increase your movement speed during slow time so whenever you use reflex tuner you don't have to use the revolver. The revolver will cost you 35 capacity just for the fact that you are not slowed down whenever reflex tuner is triggered. But you can simply reach that by using a normal reflex tuner together with threat evac that will only cost you 13 capacity and threat evac will also trigger at 25% health and increase your movement speed whenever it triggers. So instead of not slowing you down together with the threat evac you will simply increase your movement speed. However, this does not counter your own slow-mo entirely, but it will allow you to move twice as fast as usual, for a very cheap price. But even better than that are the new Q glitches. Of course you all know you have to get overclocked to get the RAM conversion going, you have to get data recycler and blood demon. And it actually turns out that it doesn't matter how you kill your enemies to get all the bonuses from this. That means you can simply upload quick hacks to your enemies and then kill them with your weapons and you will still get all the same bonuses. And the same trick also works with overclock. So if you use synapse burnout, kill your enemies with a weapon, it will still prolong your overclock effect, which is absolutely crazy. So what you can do now is you can simply spam any quick hack, even a cheap one, but it probably makes most sense to use synapse burnout, then jump towards your enemies, use your katana or any other weapon and slash your enemies and you will still get all the bonuses from data recycler and blood demon if you do that, which is just insane. You can also do that with any other weapon type. Simply upload a couple of quick hacks then shoot them in their face to get 200 health every time. This kind of seems beyond broken but it does exactly what is written on data recycler and blood demon that you get this bonus for every quick hack that is still in the queue. But the fun fact is that you get this even for the first quick hack because the first one was not even executed. So until CDPR decides that this may also not be the intended way to play this game, simply activate your overclock, activate blood pump and then you simply upload as much quick hacks to your enemies as possible and then you can just run towards them and finish them off. No matter if you kill them with a quick hack or with any of your weapons or blades, you will always get the bonus anyway. You can of course use any other quick hack for this too, but it is best to use Synapse Burnout to prolong your overclock effect. We will of course also use the Axolotl and the more kills you actually make with Axolotl, the faster you will trigger the RAM manager to refill your RAM and also the Reflex Tuner. So the Reflex Tuner will literally trigger every few seconds and thanks to Threadivac, we will get a faster movement during Reflex Tuner and the Blood Pump and Biomonitor will always heal you automatically. So you don't have to care about any of those other mechanics. Just focus on killing and quick hacking your enemies and everything else will be done automatically. You will get an insane amount of health and RAM as long as you continue killing your enemies. And it is not important how you achieve that as long as they have a quick hack in their queue. But now let's check out how the build is actually made. For the weapons of course I propose to use the Byako, you can also go for the Errata. I would not recommend to go for the Scalpel, the Scalpel is of course the best katana if you play with Sandavistan, but since we use a net running OS you should definitely either go for the Byako or for the Errata, depending on what you prefer. I prefer the Byako simply for the speed. If you go for critical damage and burning damage then the Errata is your best choice. Weapons that work really great together with quick hacking are shotguns, because whenever you obliterate your enemy with a shotgun, you also gain a massive boost for your adrenaline, so I picked the Sovereign for my second option. It also works extremely great if you upload quick hacks and then simply one shot them to get the health boost every time. For the third weapon I picked the Raiju because I simply love to use this weapon. You could of course use anything else in this slot, but I wanted to have an SMG or an assault rifle in this slot. But your main weapon of choice should be the Katana and your quick hacks. For the operating system I will again go for the Tetratonic Rippler Mark V because it is a very cheap one that 
also triggers very big bonuses if you first upload a non-combat quick hack, such as cyberware malfunction or ping, followed by synapse burnout. This is how you can achieve the highest damage, but most of the time it is actually enough to just spam synapse burnout. To get your quick hacks in the correct order, you should also put Synapse Burnout in your last slot. Whatever you put last, even if the other slots are empty, will be the first in your list so you don't have to scroll down your list every time. The quick hacks I would recommend to use are of course Synapse Burnout in your first slot, which means the last one here in the list. Then you go for System Collapse, then Short Circuit for the robots, Cyberware Malfunction, Cripple Movement and Ping. This is mainly everything you will ever need. To get the iconic Synapse Burnout, you should check out the Netrunner shop in Japantown, which is near the fast travel point Crescent and Broad. Please be aware that this shop is only open once you have completed one of Wakako's gigs that happens in the same location. I've also added Gorilla Arms for more melee action if you prefer to use your arms instead of your katana. The Ballistic Co-Processor is only here for more stats on our cyberware and then of course a Blood Pump for the healing. Don't forget the Netrunner Eyewear to increase your quick hack upload speed. But now let's check out the cyberware. I have around 308 capacity for this build. Of course we use the Adrenas perk to get as much as possible and you can also to use the gorilla arms to get basically 8 capacity for free. Because when you equip the gorilla arms and save your game and then load back that save, you will get the 8 capacity of the gorilla arms refunded so you can use them again for something else. That's why I'm stuck at 308 instead of 300 and you can also see that my yellow bar is slightly above the red bar which basically just comes from the gorilla arms glitch. In our frontal cortex of course we'll go for the axolotl which is simply one of the best cyberware in the game because it can trigger all those additional passive of effects without even having to focus on them. It simply eliminates all the cooldown from Reflex Tuner and from the RAM Manager because you will make so many kills anyway that you will trigger them every few seconds. To get the most of your Netrunner build you definitely have to go for the COX-2 Cybersomatic Optimizer. This will still give you 100% guaranteed critical damage for all your quick hacks. However the additional 1000% quick hack damage which was only triggered by Synapse Burnout was patched recently in patch 202 so it is no longer possible to get over 75,000 damage. So after patch 202 you will only get around 7 to 10,000 damage on average and with a maxed out queue you should get around 20,000 damage which is still plenty. Instead of the iconic RAM manager, Manager, which costs you 40 capacity, it is actually completely enough to just go for the normal RAM manager. Because the axolotl will remove the entire cooldown of the normal RAM manager anyway, and the only difference between the normal RAM manager and the iconic RAM manager is a slightly reduced cooldown, which will be eliminated by axolotl anyway. If you want to play with gorilla arms, you should add the electrified gorilla arms to your build. Electric damage is always the best one. And as I already said, these 8 capacity will be refunded if you save your game and reload that save. So you basically add the gorilla arms for free. In the skeleton slots we just go for as much armor as possible, so we go for the epimorphic skeleton, for the normal parabellum and for the bionic joints. To increase the crit chance for blades you should definitely pick up a stabber in your nervous system and then of course the reflex tuner which is automatically activated every few seconds by the axolotl if you just make enough kills, which will greatly help you if you are fighting a lot of enemies simultaneously. And to counter the slow-mo effect on yourself you can actually put the thread evac in the circulatory system that will increase your movement speed whenever you are at low health and this will always be triggered together with the reflex tuner because it also activates at 25% health. It will not remove the slow-mo effect on yourself entirely but it is a very cost effective alternative instead of using the revolzor. In the integumentary system you should of course go for subdermal armor and carapace. Carapace is so great because it increases your armor effectiveness if you are attacked from the sides or from the rear so it actually eliminates additional damage instead of just converting it to damage over time. So carapace is in my opinion always the go to option if you are fighting large groups of enemies. For the operating system we will of course go for the tetratonic rippler mark 5. It is not only a very cheap one it will also give you additional ram and over 40% additional damage when you first upload a non-combat quick hack. To further increase the crit chance for the Byako and your other weapons, definitely go for the Kiroshi Cockatrice optics. The Ballistic Co-Processor is only added here to increase your stats for more melee damage and RAM regeneration, it is not really actively used. In the circulatory system we will of course go for the blood pump and biomonitor combo that will trigger automatic healing whenever your health drops too low and the thread evac will counter a big part of your movement penalty when you use the normal reflex tuner. You can of course alternatively go for a heal on kill but you will get so much health back from blood demon that it is not really needed. And then of course don't forget the tendons for your double jump. For the additional stats I would recommend you go for quick hack damage, melee damage, health, ram and health regeneration. To get the most out of a Netrunner build you definitely have to max out body, not only for the adrenaline but also for the health item recharge speed. 
then of course go for maximum on tech to get the edge runners perk and intelligence should be maxed out. Even if you don't go for any of those finishers, 20 intelligence is needed to max out the base DPS of your quick hacks. In the body tree of course you should first go for all the health and health recharge which is at the bottom and then go for the adrenaline stuff which is further up in the tree. These two are mandatory if you want to play with a natural knight. Especially the adrenaline gives you so much additional health which you can use as your ram. The finisher will give you additional health item recharge speed and all that will work extremely well together with the auto healing you get from blood pump and bio monitor. And shotguns is an extremely good complementary weapon because whenever you obliterate an enemy thanks to the bloodlust perk you will also gain additional adrenaline. But if you rather want to play with your gorilla arms, of course you can also totally go for the melee tree on the other side. The most important abilities in the reflex tree are of course flash and thunderclap and the finishers for your blades. So after you set up your net running stuff, this is definitely mandatory to get early on. So basically get everything that leads to flash and thunderclap, slippery, dash and then on the other side lead and steel and everything that leads to flash and thunderclap. And then of course don't forget the finishers and everything that enhances your finishers. You can of course also go for bullet time but I find it is rather optional. If you like air dash, of course you can grab air dash too. The most important skill tree for net running is of course intelligence and the most important skill here is of course overclock which basically unlocks the overclock without that you basically can't do much. Data recycler will basically give you infinite RAM but it only counts the RAM that you actually spend and not the original RAM cost so it is slightly nerfed but still very good. And Blood Demon will still give you 40 health for every quick hack that remains in the queue. But the most important thing is that all these bonuses will also be applied if you kill your enemies with a weapon or with a blade. In the center tree you should go for optimization, embedded exploit and overclock. The overclock mode will start using your health instead of your RAM and you can activate it the same way as you activate your Sunday Vistan or your Berserk. Especially sublimation and also the other perks will greatly help you to increase your health too but the most important thing is Blood Demon. Blood Demon will make sure you get over 200 health for every enemy you kill and in order to get that you also have to get the left tree all the way up to unlock the Blood Demon perk. Of course you can also get Data Recycler. Data Recycler is a little bit weaker now and if you want to you can also go for Q mastery. But the key thing of Q mastery was that your last quick hack got a 50% discount and you got more RAM back from using data recycler on your last quick hack. This is not the case anymore so it is not really needed to upload 4 quick hacks. So 3 quick hacks will be more than enough to deal with everything. However you should still get intelligence 20 because intelligence 20 will directly affect the base amount of damage for your quick hacks. The tech tree looks as usual, we will of course go for all things cyber, steel and chrome and the edge runners perk. As long as the capacity bug is not fixed, edge runners remains a mandatory to get in every build. And then of course we will go for the extended warranty to increase any duration of all our cyberware. Chrome constitution is actually great but it only works when you fill your skeleton and your integumentary system at the same time. So we didn't do that so we can remove that. Renaissance punk increases your cyberware capacity and driver update allows us to use 3 additional perks. In the left tree we'll go for Glutton for VAR, Health Freak and Pyromania. Heat Shield increases our mitigation chance for every stack of Pyromania and Friendly Fire prevents us from blowing up ourselves when we blow up a lot of cars. And of course we also grab the perks and improve our health items recharge and performance. There's not much going on in the cool tree and we basically only get the additional points to increase our critical damage. However we will go for Feline Foodworks, the Killer Instinct for stealth damage and Quick Getaway for also increased movement speed. The Relic tree is not really relevant but if you want to use your Mendel's Blades then definitely go for Spatial Mapping or if you want to use the Gorilla Arms instead of Shotguns then you can go for Limiter Removal. I hope this build was helpful and you can now enjoy net running again even after patch 202. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.